it's really a process when a group of educators come together and examine their own professional practices. It involves four interactive stages, uh, beginning with stage one, which is problem framing. And in the problem framing process, the team identifies some of the issues that they're struggling with uh, that are based on student learning needs. So what is it that their students need to know and understand, and what are some of the gaps in educators' learning uh, that need to occur? And so they determine um, really something that's going to guide their inquiry that's based on student learning needs, and then they determine some actions that they're going to take to um, identify or to address some of these issues that they've identified. Uh, the next stage in collaborative inquiry involves uh, the collection of evidence. So what is it that they're going to examine that will tell them if their actions have actually um, been effective? and um, what kind of evidence is going to best determine uh, how they can address the issues. So they identify that evidence, and in the third stage, they come together to analyze the evidence. And so um, what is the information telling them uh, that's going to inform their next steps? And in the last stage, uh, it involves a lot of reflection because they come together and really reflect on some of the things that they've learned and some of the things that they want to share with others. So that final stage is so key uh, because they come together and think, what is it uh, that worked? What didn't? What are our next steps as a group? And um, always focusing throughout the process on student learning needs. Well, it can be as small as um, two educators coming together to examine their professional practice, or it can be a group of people that come together uh, based on a common learning need that they've identified. And in my experience, if you want to build capacity, it really helps to um, choose the people in the beginning who are leaders in the school who are uh, willing to try something new and that might be out of their comfort zone but also those people who have the ability to get other people to take action and so you might start with department heads or division leads um, people who um, are willing to try something different in their classroom reflect on uh, the outcomes of that new action and share their experience with others to get others on board Absolutely. It doesn't have to start with a division leader. Um, I've seen some, some teachers take on a collaborative inquiry uh, cross division, cross uh, panel, cross um, curriculum department, um, or, or teachers that share grade six students, for example. Um, so it really is teacher driven, and that's why I like the model so much because it's about teacher leadership and teachers taking charge of their own professional learning. I think it's such an effective approach because number one, in my experience in leading teams, one of the things that uh, happens as a result of being engaged in collaborative inquiry is that people actually take action in their classroom and change their practice. Um, number two, through the process, teachers gain a great understanding of their own practices and the results that their practice has on student behaviors. It really helps to bridge the gap between theory and practice, and it allows for improvement in student learning and in the enhancement of teaching.